Hoy veremos. Today we will see. We are in the municipality of Tamisis, Antioquia, in the village of La Alacena, at 2,200 metres above sea level. It is important to emphasise that these contingency practices for the use of soils are extremely beneficial when it comes to guaranteeing all the conditions that the orchard needs to establish itself. Within the agronomic management of avocado, it is important to take into account the soil component. It is important to invite all producers to make sure that we have all these conditions in terms of soil, in terms of clear agronomic practices before planning the productive project. Tamesis. Tamesis is a municipality located in the southwest of the department of Antioquia in Colombia, just three and a half hours from the city of Medellin. Medellin. It is located on the western Cordillera in one of the most beautiful subregions of this department. De este departamento. Cuenta con una superficie de... It has an area of more than 245,000 square kilometers and is located at an altitude of 1,634 metres above sea level. It has an average temperature of 18 degrees Celsius, making this municipality an area with appropriate conditions for the establishment of new important crops for the development of the regions such as avocado. Como el aguacate. In este programa, in this program, we will learn about some of the tasks or cultural activities that are carried out for the preparation of a crop, Las cuales garantizan con su debida aplicación, which guarantees the quality of the product with its proper application. Together, all these activities are known as agronomic management. Agronomico. Las labores culturales son cultural tasks are those maintenance and care activities that are carried out throughout the production of any type of plant. De cualquier tipo de planta. Ya sea campo abierto, whether in the open field or in protected agriculture, whose main objective is to provide and the conditions, whose main objective is to provide the conditions and requirements that the plants need to grow. These activities offer greater efficiency in the regulation and application of nutrients which implies the correct use of resources such as water and fertilizers, as well as low maintenance costs. Today we are in the municipality of Damasus, Antioquia, in the village of Alla Alacena, at 2,200 metres above sea level, with agroclimatic conditions favourable for the development of avocado cultivation. In that order of ideas, we can get annual rainfall of up to 3,000 millimetres and relative humidity that exceeds 86%. Therefore, Pruning is one of the most important practices when it comes to guaranteeing the development of the tree, since in addition to stimulating its correct growth of its branches, we also guarantee that fungi and other diseases that may be affected by the increase in shade inside and accumulation of humidity can proliferate easily. It is important to consider that after each pruning there is a regrowth that can be used in favour of harvest projections. Since after each of these, a floral planicle comes out that can guarantee us greater productivity. Therefore, playing with the harvest and sleepy periods, we can be programming the pruning in such a way that our activities are synchronous based on our projection of fruit. Los árboles de aguacate muestran diversas fases de desarrollo. Avocado trees show various phases of development, vegetative growth, flowering, mooring, growth and maturation. Pruning is an important task in avocado cultivation, which must be understood and practiced to ensure high efficiency. A tree without any pruning work 
causes multiple branches in the lower part of the crown with very closed angles, which favours the breaking of the branches due to the weight of the harvest and the wind. Likewise, avocado pruning helps sunlight to penetrate more uniformly within the crown, also allows for better management that will facilitate sanitary treatments and a greater number of plants per area, as well as favour harvesting tasks. It is important to make sure that each of the cuts is bevelled, looking for that in this way there is no type of accumulation of water that could favour the proliferation of fungi and bacteria at the point of the cut. It is very important with the collaborators and pruners in charge on the subject to carry out a series of training sessions, looking for them to be very strict when it comes to disinfecting the tools when moving from one tree to another, thus avoiding that we end up spreading diseases on the property, which may be localised and sectorised in certain places. Additionally, once the cut is made, the sealing of the wound must be ensured, seeking in turn with antifungal and antibacterial substances. In some cases, there are no spread of diseases due to this activity. It is important to consider the dates in which pruning is done, since, according to that, we may be playing with the weather conditions, preventing fungal diseases from easily proliferating at those times when we have high concentrations of humidity. Therefore, on these clear days, where there is no rain, it is the right time to carry out the activity. Among the objectives of pruning we have, to help sunlight penetrate better, evenly within the crown, which avoids having unproductive interior branches and even reducing the pressure of pests and diseases by avoiding generating favourable microclimates for these organisms. Pruning also allows to improve production in fruit trees. The purpose of pruning is to have strong, healthy and attractive trees. It should be noted that pruning can extend the useful life of our orchards. Therefore, it is very important that as house avocado producers, we consider the, the correct practice to guarantee and increase both the productivity and the useful life of the orchard. It is important that we also, from the very installation of the planting densities, project the growth of the tree, identifying the distribution of their branches, how the sun is oriented and, let's say, other criteria that depend on photosynthesis based on development of the fruit are in favour of us and not against. Therefore, keeping in mind each of the criteria mentioned above is crucial to guarantee an excellent establishment and great productivity. It should be noted by way of invitation that it is important that as producers we carry out these activities, that we incorporate them into our day-to-day -day and do not leave them as an optional practice, since it will guarantee both our phytosanitary status in the orchard as well as productivity in the coming years. The objective is to form a plant that facilitates harvesting, health and the entry of light to the interior branches and increase output. Also with pruning, aeration is favoured, which brings two benefits. The first is the exchange in the air and particularly carbon dioxide, which favours photosynthesis and output. The second is adequate aeration to reduce the incidence of pests and diseases by avoiding the formation of favourable microclimates for these organisms. We have the pruning of low branches. This is done to keep the trunk clear from its base up to one metre in height. The purpose of this pruning is to prevent the fruits from being close to the ground, to prevent diseases such as anthracnose or basal spot by reducing the relative humidity that favours development of these pathogens.
También tenemos la poda de... We also have the pruning of apical and lateral branches. This pruning slows the lateral and apical growth so that the trees take longer to enclose. Para que los árboles tarden más en cerrarse. It is recommended to do it after the fruit is set and when the spring vegetative shoots have finished their growth. The shoots they should be reduced to 30 to 50% of their length. This consists of totally or partially eliminating the vegetative shoots that go towards the center to facilitate the entry of light and to leave only productive branches with interspersed directions. It is important to take healing into account. After pruning, it is recommended to apply healing paste on branches with wounds of more than 3 cm in diameter. This healing paste allows the cut to be sealed, preventing it from penetrating moisture and fungi that later cause the development of tree diseases. It is important to stimulate the natural processes that improve the absorption and assimilation of nutrients to treat abiotic stress and improve any phenological state of the crop. After pruning, the foliar application of biostimulants is ideal, in the morning or at sunset. Since these times, the stomata are open and we will have an improved assimilation of the substances. Amino acids, humic and fulvic acids, can help us or are ideal for biostimulating after pruning, since these allow cell division and the generation of new vegetative shoots. They are quickly absorbed by the plant and are directly incorporated into its metabolism. Another fundamental factor within the agronomic management of crops is the soil. And to determine what condition it is in when carrying out planting or maintenance tasks, it is necessary to carry out studies that allow decisions to be made for the establishment of plantations. For this, the test pits are made, which are one of the prospecting techniques used to facilitate the geotechnical recognition of a terrain. Las calicatas. The test pits allow the direct inspection of the soil to be studied. Y por lo tanto, es el método de... And therefore, it is the exploration method that normally provides the most reliable and complete information. Dentro del manejo agronomico... Within the agronomic management of avocado, it is important to take into account the soil component since this is fundamental and is part of the natural environment. It is made up of minerals, air, water, organic matter, macro and microorganisms that carry out permanent biotic and abiotic processes, performing vital functions for agriculture. We call soil the superficial part of the Earth's crust, biologically active product, product of the physical or chemical disintegration of rocks and organic residues from the activities of living beings that settle on it. It is important to take into account that there are several types of soils. We have sandy soils which are composed of a granular texture up to 50 centimeters deep and consequently retain few nutrients and little water release. There are clay soils which form very fine particles and form clay when they are saturated with water. Clay soils are heavy, they do not drain or dry easily and contain good reserves of nutrients. They are fertile but difficult to work with when they are very dry. There are also calcareous soils. Calcareous soils frequently contain more than 15% of calcium that can appear in different forms, dusty, nodules or scabs. There are also loam soils. These are in the superficial part of the land whose quantitative composition is in optimal proportions. It is a soil of high agricultural productivity with relatively loose textures favored by the sand and the fertility provided by the silts. El suelo limoso. The silty soil has intermediate sized granules. They are fertile and easy to work. They form easy to disaggregate soils and when they are dry, they contain clay, which are very fine particles and form mud when they are saturated with water. Es importante también. It is also important to take into account the biological properties. Since the soils contain a wide variety of biological forms with very different sizes such as viruses, bacteria, fungi, algae, mites, 
earthworms, nematodes, ants, and of course the living roots of plants, which have a relative importance in each one. On them, the properties of the soil depend on this. The soil must be understood as an ungovernable set of microorganisms that compete with each other to obtain what they need, which are nutrients and energy. While the products of their metabolism alter the chemical composition of the soil where they live, the main groups used in the agriculture are mycorrhizae, rhizobacteria, and trichodermas. These interrelationships between microorganisms affect the soil plant interaction directly in the growth and development of plant species. There are various threats to the soil, the factors that cause soil degradation. They are deforestation, population growth, the expansion of cities, pollution, waste disposal, climate change, and agricultural practices that are mostly unsustainable, such as the herbicide and pesticide applications that are deteriorating the microbiological part every day, turning the soil from alive to inert. Bioremediation is a process through which microorganisms are incorporated that help transfer dangerous chemical compounds from a soil. Beneficial microorganisms such as Ecobian, based on Lactobacillus mycorrhizae, subtle bacilli, establish symbiosis with plants to promote their nutrition. Humic and fulvic acids also contributed as another bioremediation technique. This is to improve soil texture and structure, favor colloidal action on clays and increase cation exchange capacity. Within the framework of the agronomic model for the establishment of an avocado orchard, it is important to consider the wetlands and the behaviour of water within the topographies that we have. Although many of the areas destined for this crop are in mountainous areas where we usually do not identify the water outcrops, it is important with troughs and with other strategies that allow us to understand the behaviour of the soil, make decisions, since many times we establish the trees without taking that consideration. And months after planting, we begin to initiate problems in root that are the most common associated with the issue of humidity. Another very important cultural practice to take into account are drains. Agricultural drainage is defined as an evacuation of excess water in the soil. Drains are as important as irrigation, since together they maintain a favourable environment in the soil to obtain optimal productions in the different crops. It must be taken into account that excess moisture favours ideal conditions for the development of fungi and pathogenic diseases which affect the roots of the different crops, weakening the plantations. Drains are one of the strategies that are most used to maintain and mitigate the water table, allowing it to drain easily and areas that usually would not be useful without this strategy. One of the considerations in terms of depth depends mainly on infiltration and the ability of the soil to drain, which refers to it mainly to the physical conditions that the particles have in it. When we are in areas that are usually preceded by pastures, the limitations are associated with trampling. Therefore, for the establishment of the orchard, we must go in advance and ask what is the history it has. Subsequently, when we are clear about these precedents, we can begin to make a series of layouts depending on the slopes and also depending on the topographies, trying to mitigate these concave areas and recharge areas that usually tend to be flat after a slope, with drains 60 or 80 centimetres deep. This according to the infiltration conditions of the soil. In the flatter areas, the drainages usually tend to be deeper, being up to 2 or 3 metres, according to the soil moisture conditions and the natural recharge zones that the topographies have. 
Sin embargo, también encontramos unos que... However, we also found some that go from 80 to 1 meter, which are mainly used to generate flow cuts in high mountains. We understand that avocado roots are extremely superficial and very vulnerable to waterlogging and phytopathological problems associated with the root. Therefore, making sure to make a sufficient number of lines in the distributions and arrangements that the crop requires are essential to guarantee its success and productivity. It is important to emphasize that these contingency practices for the use of soils are extremely beneficial when it comes to guaranteeing all the conditions that the orchard needs to establish itself. However, when we are going to take a tour for the first time in the areas where the trees are going to be established, we must guarantee that all the conditions that are needed for this purpose are guaranteed. Drainage, soil analysis, microbiological analysis, when necessary, among others, which will actually allow the tree to grow and be productive. Knowing the soil conditions will guarantee that we as producers are clear about the challenges that we are going to face when establishing the crop. Understand how infiltration works. What are the points where moisture emerges? What are the points where moisture emerges? What are the nutritional conditions? What are the phytosanitary conditions? Among others, they will be the work route that will allow the success and development of the crop guaranteeing in the future minimum death and great productivities. It is important to invite all the producers to make sure that we have all these conditions in terms of soil, in terms of clear agronomic practices before planning the productive project, since many times it is along the way where mistakes are made and if from a principle are planned and considered, a technical proposal can be developed that accompanies from the establishment to a productive stage. Mm -hmm.